taking these LoRa modules, send signals from underwater, and putting two frequencies against each other, 433 MHz and 866 MHz. We are starting small and then going big. Bucket, drum, and a river. Which one is the king? Let's dive in. Check this. The 866 MHz pair is alive. You are watching it beam numbers wirelessly to the receiver right now. Outside water, this thing hits over a kilometer. I proved it in my last video. Underwater range, no clue yet. Total mystery. But here's the deal. When the receiver stops counting, we will know that the signals are not coming through the water. Let me show you. If I turn off the transmitter, the communication will stop. And if I turn it back on, the counting will start again. And this is our 433 megahertz setup, which I have used in many projects. Same program, same mission, firing numbers to the receiver. Water is the enemy, so I'm sealing it up. And for that, I'm going to place the transmitter side into this plastic container. But before that, let me quickly tell you about the power supply. This is my custom designed 5 volt 3 amps power supply and with that I will be using my self made 4 is lithium ion battery pack. I have already made detailed videos on both of these you can find links to the related videos in the description below. This isn't completely sealed, so there is a high chance that water might get inside the container. I can't afford even a tiny risk, so I'm putting this container inside a plastic bag too. And with it, I'm going to add a little weight so it dips properly into the water. I've used double shoppers, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be totally safe. I pick the container side wheel and as you can see the counting is being received on the receiver. Our setup is completely ready for the first test. Just a foot of water. First we will check out the 866 MHz LoRa modules. Dropping it in. The box is floating right on top of the water even though I put a 3 kg weight in it and it still isn't sinking underwater. Looks like I will have to dip it with my hand. This is crazy. The transmitter side is completely submerged underwater and the transmitter is still able to communicate wirelessly from inside the water. This is something I have never done before nor has anyone else so far. It's communicating quite easily from inside the bucket because there is only about one foot of water in it. But still it's quite impressive. Right now the receiver is quite close to it but in next experiments we will also increase the range and that's when the true power of these LoRa modules will be revealed. Anyway, now we will check the 433 MHz LoRa modules. As you can see, numbers are being received on the receiver. They communicate well outside the water. Let's see what happens after tipping the transmitter side LoRa underwater. The transmitter is completely underwater and numbers are still being received on the receiver. Water is getting inside the shopper, but I'm not worried at all because I have used double shoppers, so the transmitter side is going to be perfectly fine. Anyways, the one foot underwater test for both LoRa modules has been successfully passed. What do you think? Will it handle more water? Guess in the comments. This is four times the dip and its diameter is also slightly bigger than the bucket. If both LoRa modules survive this test as well then we will head to the riverside. Before this the box wasn't dipping underwater so this time I'm putting this 4 kg weight with it. Hopefully this time it will dip properly underwater. 866 megahertz LoRa dropping in. It 
It's not dipping underwater this time either. Let's try to remove the ear. Finally, the transmitter has sunk underwater. Right now, the transmitter is at the very bottom where it is also getting inside the shopper. But I am not worried because there is another shopper inside it. And then inside that shopper, the transmitter is in a box. So it won't get damaged. Now, I'm going to move a short distance away to test the effective range of this 866 MHz LoRa module in practice. As you are aware, radio signals experience attenuation underwater. According to theory, low frequencies maintain their strength better, while higher frequencies such as this 866 MHz suffer a greater signal loss due to water's properties. Now, we will put that theory to a test and determine the actual performance firsthand. Right now, my distance from the transmitter is around 25 meters and the receiver is still receiving the count. Now, I'm going to increase my distance a bit more. As soon as I went behind the wall, the receiver stopped receiving data. If there wasn't a wall and it was in open space, it might have covered a greater range. By the way, the type of antenna also matters a lot. I have already made a video on different types of LoRa antennas. As you can see, the receiver has started receiving numbers again. Now, 433 MHz LoRa transmitter. As per the theory, 433 MHz LoRa modules should perform a bit better than 866 MHz. Let's check it out. Amazing, it's working as expected. Now we will check the receiver's distance. It should cover a greater distance because of the low frequency and the FPC type antenna. It's still working even after coming behind the wall. Now I've come outside the house. There are many walls in between and the receiver is still receiving numbers. When I go further away than this, the communication stops. If I had used a suction cup antenna instead of the FPC antenna, the range might have been a bit more. If there were no walls in between, the range would have been much greater. So, in this test, the 433 MHz LoRa modules are the winner. It performed well at a 4 feet depth, but how does it perform in more water and increased depth? For that, I will have to go to the riverside. So, let's quickly take the transmitter out of the water and head to the riverside. We have reached the riverside and the water flow is quite strong. So going in the boat and testing in the middle of the river is impossible. After searching for quite some time, we have finally found a spot right here on the bank where the water is quite deep. If it works even in this deep water, then it's going to be a wow moment. This time, I have changed the setup a little bit. As you can see, I'm using a measuring tape along with the rope so that we know the depth accurately. Looking good, the data stream is solid on the receiver. Let's see if 866 MHz can handle the pressure. Everything looks just fine. So let's start the test. The counting has stopped on the receiver. 2.9 feet is the maximum dip distance from where the 866 MHz LoRa transmitter can effectively communicate. Now let's check the 433 MHz LoRa modules. The numbers are streaming in perfectly on the receiver. Everything looks just fine. Let's take the transmitter side underwater now and let's see if the 433 MHz LoRa module could give us a slightly larger communication distance. This is absolutely mind-blowing. We have already crossed 3 feet and the receiver is still receiving the count. The measuring tape has also completely submerged underwater. The transmitter side has now reached the bottom of the water. It can't go any further down. Numbers are still making their way wirelessly to the receiver. It's like magic happening underwater. The transmitter side LoRa is currently 6.25 feet deep underwater and communication is still ongoing. I'm sure it will easily go up to 10 feet or even more. Anyway, in this underwater test, 433 MHz LoRa is the winner. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.